everybody, welcome back to my painting journey. Today I have for you a putty patroller. This is from the new Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid game. I've been working slowly through the miniatures and these are foot soldiers, there are a lot of them. And I wanted to figure out how to paint them quickly because I don't want to spend a lot of time on them because I want to get through the game and get it all painted. So one thing that I'm going to show you today is a contrast paint. Citadel has a line of contrast paints and what they do is they base, highlight, and shade all in one coat. So we're going to take a look at that. So here is our putty patroller, and I primed him in white. Normally I prime in black because I feel it helps with the shadows, but we're going to be trying out a contrast paint on him today, which works better over white primers. We're going to actually start with the contrast color. So I have Citadel, and it is base, basil, it, Basilicanum Gray. That's what it looks like. So you give it a good shake. I'm going to take my Wargamer, oh it's getting kind of dirty, large dry brush. It has a nice big brush on the end. Give it a good shake. And I'm going to just load my brush up with paint and then brush it on. And I found that for these miniatures anyway, brushing it from the belt up actually has been working better. And I've tried this before on some other putty patrollers and I just kind of slapped the paint on there. You know, somebody told me when you use contrast paints, just slap, slap it on there, you know? Don't worry about being messy. So that's what I did. And it turned out really splotchy and I didn't care for it. So I'm trying to get it spread on evenly. If there's any places where I feel it's coated too heavily, you know, try to work it out over the rest of the miniature. And the primer I used for this was just a Rust-Oleum white primer that bonds to plastic, just from a general hardware store. But I'm sure there are, there are nicer ones that you could go for if you wanted. That's just what I had on hand. So you can see that it's kind of pulled up in his hand right there. I'm just gonna work it out so that it doesn't turn out really dark. And the same thing on his back. Now, now that I've got it on there from brushing it from the belt up, I'm going to smooth it out. If I go inside to side, just in the places that it looks like it might dry a little unevenly. Okay, we're going to let that dry, and while we do, we'll move on to painting his pants. So I'm going to give him, like, make kind of a denim color. So we're going to use Reaper Oceanic Blue. Shake it up really good. We're gonna use two drops of that and one drop of solid black. Now Reaper paints I think are already a little more thin than Citadel. So I'm actually not gonna thin it down too much because the last time I did on one of these miniatures I had to give it like six coats to get it to finally, you know, cover evenly. So my brush is a little damp and I'm just gonna try that. I'm using the small flat brush again. I like the angled edge because it helps me to get into the corners and under crevices pretty easily. It's probably called a, a small dry brush because you're supposed to use it for dry brushing, but oh well, I like it for all the painting. Ultimately, if you like a different brush, go for it. Ultimately, whatever feels best to you is what you should do. Okay, while that dries, I notice that his, the bottom parts of his legs are also kind of stony looking. So I'm just going to rinse out my brush real quick, dry it off, and I'm going to take that contrast paint. I'm just going to work it down his legs. Remember when you're using Citadel paints to always take the paint from the top of the pot, not from inside, because if your brush is gross, It'll make your whole pot nasty. Okay, that needs to dry. There's some parts on his arms where I can see it's getting a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, but it's getting a little splotchy there, so I'm just gonna really lightly touch those up. I 
rinse off the brush and his pants are dry now so we can apply a second coat to his pants. Now I'm going to do his belt and I've just been doing the belts a simple black color. So let's take our our Wargamer detail brush. I chose this one because it's got a nice small thin tip and the belt is also thin. And we're just going to make a little spot of solid black. I'm going to start at one side of the belt buckle and just pull it out to the sides. I should be using this holder. Pop them in there real quick. This is a Citadel holder. It just makes things easier to turn and hold in your hand without dropping them. But as you've seen, sometimes I still drop them. I'm going to get a little bit on the edge of the brush and I'm just going to run it around this lip at the top of his belt, between his belt and his waist. His pants are dry again, so let's go back with our third coat. I'm switching between colors now on the same miniature instead of waiting for it to dry completely. It helps to save on time and as long as the color you're painting over has dried, it shouldn't be a problem. It only becomes a problem when you try to paint a new coat over one that's still wet. Then it'll pull up in certain areas, which will make it splotchy and uneven. Or sometimes it'll mix on the miniature and make a really weird color that you don't want. Okay, there's our third coat there. Now for his belt buckle, I'm just gonna take, there it is, my dragon gold. I love this gold. Give it a really good shake. I'm gonna take that same Wargamer detail brush and just dip it and just dip the tip in and then drag it across the belt buckle and just little strokes. Kind of move it in a circular motion around the edges. That'll help it to make, to look more like a circle. Okay, the contrast paint has mostly dried, so I wanna show you what it looks like. It looks really cool. So this is just one coat of paint that we've put on his body. And you can see that the contrast paint seeped down into the cracks like a wash. But it took a lot of the pigment with it, which left less pigment for the ridges. So his ridges are white, just like if we had dry brushed them or highlighted them. And his crevices are dark. His face, you can see all the detail in it, all the cracks in his hands and in his feet. And that's just from one coat of paint, and that's what a contrast paint does. It also helped to stain the primer to cover it just a little bit, so he's got that gray, that gray color that I wanted. And I didn't have to go through all the work of basing and shading and highlighting. So I think that contrast paints would be really helpful for some miniatures, especially ones like this. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-four of them that came with this game. And I didn't really want to spend a lot of time painting them. That would take a really long time. So just having this contrast paint made it super quick. All right, the last thing we're going to do is his eyes. I'm going to get some of our heraldic red. And I'm going to take my... Uh, Wargamer the Psycho Brush, and this one has an itty bitty, really small, fine tip, which is great for details. I'm just gonna poke it, boop, just a tiny bit, and even that might be too much. I'm gonna wipe it on my hand, and I'm just gonna take that tiny bit of paint, and I'm going to just kind of slide it into his eye socket, and pull it back like this. And then I'm gonna turn him over, and do the same thing on this side. Just poke it in and pull it out, like this. We need a little more paint, a tiny bit. If you poke it in and pull it towards you, it helps to, gives you a little more control over the brush and what you're doing. All right, all I have to do now is the base. So I'll show you real quick in case you haven't seen the base before. Just take some black paint on a cheap Walmart brush Just kind of paint it on the miniature. I'm gonna get a different Walmart brush for this one. Get a real quick, quick rinse because it was a little bit hard on the ends. There we go. So this is just like an apple barrel black. It's just a craft paint that you can find for like 50 cents a bottle. At least here you can. If you slide it towards, you know, the side of your brush towards your miniature, it'll help you get less paint on the base of it. 
Just kind of slide it around your, um, like the feet and stuff. Okay, probably don't need to watch me do another coat of black on the base because it's pretty non-technical. Anyways, so all I have to do now is wait for him to dry, touch up the base with another coat so you don't see the lines, and then spray him with a protective varnish. I'll show you the two that I like. Just because I have them, if I had something, if I had money to spend on a really nice varnish, I would. But right now I just have the Rust-Oleum. I have a semi-gloss and a matte. They bond to plastic, which is important, and you just do a couple of thin coats. You know, do a thin coat, wait for it to dry, do another thin coat, wait for it to dry, until it's all covered. If you do a semi-gloss, it'll be a little bit shiny. If you do a matte, it won't have any shine. Well, it'll still have a little bit of shine, but not as much as the semi-gloss. There's also dull coats that I've heard about, which don't have any shine at all, and those sound awesome. I'm hoping, hoping to get some soon, but I like to use the matte for these highly pigmented paints because sometimes the semi-gloss can make the colors pop too much, and then they look overdone, they look gaudy, and they look... It's just too much. So, I prefer the matte. If you want to do semi-gloss, this is what I used to use on my miniatures that I just painted with craft paint because I liked how it made the colors pop. It made them look fresh. It was amazing, but on these ones it's too much. So use whatever kind of varnish you want as well as long as it bonds to plastic. Oops, as long as it bonds to plastic and you do thin coats one at a time waiting for them to dry, you'll be good. I hope you had fun watching. I thought it was super cool to watch that contrast paint seep down into the cracks and leave the tips and ridges of the miniature white and light, and it just did its whole shading, highlighting thing. It was really cool, and it saved me a lot of time. I liked watching it do its whole highlighting and shading thing all in one coat. Here is the Putty Patroller. He's all dried now. He looks great. Those details really pop, and it was so easy to just use that contrast paint to get everything that we needed really easily and really quickly. So I hope you had fun watching. Thanks for joining me on my journey.